Capresh. Thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into it. All right. Okay, what's up everybody? Do right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Zero Hour because people keep sending me messages about how these developers have been getting cocky lately. Like they're so high up there that they can't be criticized. As if the game has no flaws and that they can excuse everything with the game's not for everyone. It's a tactical FPS. As if that somehow excuses them. I think this is like the first time that I've ever really encountered a developer with a decent game that like receives a bunch of criticism and then turns around. Well, obviously Obviously, you're not someone that likes my game, so go play something else. This is supposed to be a tactical shoot. Like, I've seen that, and I don't like that. Especially coming from a game that's niche and needs a player base. The last thing you want to do is shut out criticism. Like, I think the main reasons as to why I haven't really, like, bashed this game is because it's only, like, eight bucks. Like, dirt cheap. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad game, but to say that it's any better than what it is without doing a whole lot of improvements, it's like, you need a reality check. Well, this is what your boy Dureg is gonna do today. Today, we are going to be bringing these developers back down to earth to remind them that even if your game is dirt cheap that don't mean there ain't no room for improvement so get off your high horses and listen to some criticism that i have of the game so aside from the fact that the game is a little janky and looking a little dated i really wanted to talk about the new recent update because i feel like there's a map on here that really missed its mark yes the map that i'm talking about is called cafe 14 it's a weird name but it's definitely the most interesting map out of all of them so far because it has a lot of gore set pieces like, I think that this is a really cool map, and it makes for a great multiplayer map. Why did I not kill him the first time? Shit! Where is this? Can I ace? Oh, oh, what an ace. But for a co-op map, not so much. Let me explain. What's missing here? And here. And here. There's no ambience. There's no soundtrack with a dark tone. No nothing. How am I supposed to feel immersed in a map with dark undertones if there is no undertones? Let's compare this to SWAT 4. Doc, this is Entry Team. We're in the house and continuing on. Roger that. Proceed with caution. Drop your weapons! This is my house. My Drop house. your weapons! I'll show you! Put your hands up and get down! You see the difference? You see how much of an impact a soundtrack can actually have? It's just something that's really lacking when it comes to Zero Hour. So that's my first issue with this map and the game in general. Let's move on to the next thing here. The map is too big. Like I said before, it's perfect for a multiplayer map, but when it comes to co-op, it just doesn't make any sense. Like the one thing that I noticed about exploring the map for the very first time is that there wasn't a whole lot of enemies. So as I was walking around waiting for something to gun me down or me to gun them down, it just never really came until I started to actually ask the question, where the hell is the enemy as soon as they asked that then they actually popped up but this was around 30 minutes of exploration but it wasn't in a spot where i was expecting like nine times out of ten he always popped up at the stairs at the very top it's just a really odd spot for him to spawn and then he would run down like a maniac laughing like crazy running all the way down just to get shot like i would expect him to spawn down in the go room or in the basement not around a spot like the stairs that's where he initially was when i first hopped into this update but thankfully after this most recent update they actually made it so that he spawns in the basement where all the gore is and he doesn't stay in like a specific spot he spawns in random spots down in the basement but then that kind of brings me to my next thing here the map should have been linear there's nothing that ruined this map for me more than opening up a door that went straight into the gore room with no ambience undertone or the bad guy at the time it was a big turnoff for me because i'm just kind of like walking around just like watching all these freaking dismembered bodies and thinking oh okay i tried to see if i could like come into a different part of the map but that ultimately led me to a bunch of like random spots 
spots where nothing was going on. Like I was moving around a gigantic house that's like five stories big for one guy who wasn't even in the freaking gore area at the time. Again, they fixed that, but still my first experience with it was just like, what the hell? Why is there so much wasted space here? And the simple answer is so that they don't have to do a multiplayer map because this is the multiplayer map. It wasn't built for co-op and that's the inherent problem. Then you're probably asking to yourself, with Durag, how could they have done this better? Well, to take another page out of SWAT 4's book, let's take a look at Fairfax. This is another map where you only have to find one guy and it's pretty linear. There are two ways to actually get into this house. You have to opt one to check to see if there's any alarms or anything like that and then you push in. But see, neither of these doors spoil the map. It's not right away. If you go into the garage door, you'll hear a radio just randomly turn on and you'll hear like the news report of the person that you're going after. That's right, Lisa. According to Roger the police, that. Proceed another with female caution. body was discovered this morning. It is believed that this young woman is also a victim of the so-called law school lyncher. According to our sources, the police are completely stumped and have no leads at this time. If you go in through the regular way, you'll hear another radio report. Oh, I would just like to say, oh, Melinda, if you can hear me, honey, I love you very much. And I'd like to and or see the grandma that will try to tell you that her son is a good boy and try to tell you not to believe the lies Generally, there's only like two people that you find in there But every now and then they'll throw in like a another person that could be like an accomplice just to keep the map a little fresh and on your toes But as soon as you start moving through the map, you start to notice that things are a little weird You see like a bunch of rats that are there like what the heck are those being used for? And then when you finally get down into the basement area things start to get a little kooky as you find the suspects The suspect is usually in the first room so it's up to you if you want to take him out or not. If you want a good score, obviously you want to get him alive. But you look around the room and you notice that there's a bunch of newspapers and wanted photos of himself, which makes me wonder if he like rebels in this type of stuff. Because it would make more sense when we walked in initially and the radios just randomly turned on. Like, did he have a camera on us and he just turned on the radios as soon as he, we were walking in? I always wondered that. But anyways, after dealing with him, then we go into the next room and we see a scene here. This is like a what the fuck moment. The hell is going on here? This is what it was kind of like building up to and then you see someone on the bed right there and you're like oh no and then it kind of clicks with you he's using all the newspapers to make paper mache of their faces and then he's hanging the faces on the ceiling or maybe wrapping them up that's what it kind of suggests with this one on the bed here but then you realize that it's not over it turns out that they dug underneath the foundation here into like some sort of little dungeon area following the dungeon you end up finding one of the lost girls that were on the radio it looks like he was using some of the paper mache that he was getting from all the newspaper clippings and putting them on the females just to have like the size of their face or something maybe the outline of their body too makes me wonder what else they were doing but uh, yeah here is a good linear map that doesn't spoil the experience in the very beginning it leads up to it and also has a bunch of set pieces there that let the player know what's really been going on if you try to piece things together and with the zero hour map it just doesn't do that so yeah pretty much if they had made this map a linear map and actually had more ambience and a way to give hints to the player of what's coming up then i think that this map would have been really good but at the moment it's kind of wasted potential they still have time to fix it though because it is an early access but then again they already kind of did ruin the ending but anyways moving on to the second map that they dropped i couldn't really review it because it's locked behind a progression system which really sucks because i really would have liked to have seen what this map looks like in a co-op setting but unfortunately i'm only able to play it through multiplayer and that's about it i think that it's actually a pretty good multiplayer map but no idea what it looks like in co-op just because i can't get to it that's one thing that this game really needs like just like a random map generator that we can set up like keep the career mode but make a separate mode that doesn't count towards your score but we're able to play the maps just to see what they're like in co-op because i mean you could do it with the multiplayer maps but you can't do it with, with the co-op maps because you could do it in swap 4 why can't you do it here like why does it need to be locked behind a progression system like i don't have time to like grind through that i have to cover other games too so keep the career mode but also add a mode where you're able to just try out the maps and also bring a couple of buddies along because one of my friends that i was playing with actually tried tried it out for the very first time but the problem is that he never progressed past the first mission so he was getting really bored just playing the same mission over and over again and i had to go in and pull up my maps that i unlocked so that he, it didn't seem boring to him so yeah you should make a mode where everybody is able to just try out the map without having to do a career mode and yeah that's pretty much all i got to say about that let's go back to the maps for a second because there's this one map called hotel trouble i think it was recently added to the co-op list it's been in the game for a while now but they just recently added it to the co-op list and the one unique thing about this one is that it has a bomb in it and if it runs out of time there's like a really cool animation that plays all friendlies have been neutralized
and you fail the mission. I mean, it's pretty cool, but at the same time, it's like, you don't know where it is, and it spawns at random places. It doesn't stay in one spot every time that you go back into the match, and the timer is going in the background, and you can't see it. So, like, I want to act tactically, but I can't really, because I have to frantically look for the bomb, and the bomb spawns at random spots, so I don't know where the hell it is. One way that they could fix this is by simply pinging it on the map. It doesn't have to be, like, a little tiny circle in a specific room. Like, you could ping an entire floor and have us look through it so that we can actually find it for ourselves but most of the time i'm either getting shot at and killed or i just never find the bomb when the freaking building explodes after seven minutes speaking of which i should keep the timer on the screen too so we can see it, it builds a lot more tension that way let's take a look back at swap 4 how did they handle this well if anybody remembers the hotel map where you're going up the stairs and then you find the bomb and then you realize that there's four more but you see a timer actually start up at the top there like the bomb timer doesn't start up until you actually get to the first bomb and you have to disable all the other ones before it explodes so i mean the way that zero hour has it isn't bad we just need to know like the general area of where it is so if they could just like ping like an entire floor to tell us what floor it's on and we just have to look for it that would be so helpful and then after we're done with that we could complete the rest of the objectives i mean this map might work for people who have like five people going in but um as for me i'm usually by myself so i just don't have that luxury and that's all i really got to say about that um the last thing that i want to talk about is the ai itself i feel like it kills people like way too fast if anything it should do what escape from tarkov does and just like like, make it so that they yell and scream so that it gives the player some reaction time to actually look at them and then have the AI shoot because I feel like it just kills people way too fast. So yeah, that's really all the criticisms that I could really think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more if I'd really decided to dig into it, but I unfortunately don't have the time for that. I know I've seen like lists upon lists of people like decide to actually talk about the game and criticize certain things that they have. And I just want to let the developers know that the reason why we criticize is because we want the game to get better. We're not doing it because we're fucking assholes, which I mean, a lot of us can be. Let's be honest here. But we're doing it so that we can help the game get better. So not only is your game dirt cheap, but it's also a really good freaking game. And I'd recommend it to almost everybody. But I'm not really recommending it all that much because there's still a lot of issues with it. Like every time that I go into a multiplayer match, I always ask the question, so what are your thoughts on the game? And the first thing that everybody always responds to me is, well, this game has really great potential. And that's the thing. It has great potential, but you guys haven't reached it yet. So I'm not really here to bash the game. I'm just here to point out a lot of things that are still wrong with it, in my opinion. And I hope that you guys can rectify in the future. I mean, you guys haven't really reached the level of bashing, and I hope you never get there. Because I do like your game, but just because I like it doesn't mean I can't criticize it, you know? It doesn't mean that I can't see inherent flaws. So yeah, I hope you guys listen to what I'm saying here, and not just blow it off. Because I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoyed the fact that I cover games like Zero Hour, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding the bell. You never know, you might find something that you like on the channel. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon. Just send two bucks a month, it really helps. With that, I'll be excited. I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.